Do you know what Memorial Day used to be called? And why do we celebrate Memorial Day in May? And what does 3 p.m. have to do with Memorial Day? How about all the big changes that came to Memorial Day after World War II? You will learn all that and more in today's video. But first, my name is Tui Snyder. I write books, I give talks, and I do a lot of research. And I love sharing what I learn right here with you on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button and tap that bell icon so you'll never miss any goodies from me. Okay, let's hit the road. America's Memorial Day was created in 1868 by General John A. Logan. At the time, Logan was serving as Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic. Nowadays, we celebrate Memorial Day on the last Monday of May, but it was originally celebrated each year on May 30th. General Logan's original orders specify that the 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of the comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. Now, when he says late rebellion, he's referring to the Civil War, which was 1861 to 1865. Memorial Day was originally meant to honor soldiers who died during America's Civil War only. And if you watched my recent video about how to identify U.S. military markers, then you already know that more lives were lost during the Civil War than from any other war or military action that the USA has been involved with. During early Memorial Day celebrations, someone would often read General Logan's Order No. 11 out loud. It didn't take long for Memorial Day to catch on. For instance, in 1884, thousands were visiting the cemeteries in Minneapolis. And in 1891, 5,000 visitors were present at Gettysburg Cemetery for Memorial Day ceremonies. You may have noticed that some of these newspapers are calling it Decoration Day instead of Memorial Day. What's up with that? Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day, but at least as early as 1883, people were trying to shift that name to Memorial Day. Even so, for many years, Memorial Day and Decoration Day were used interchangeably. People knew what you meant either way. Here's a good example from the classified ads section from a 1957 newspaper. One ad calls it Memorial Day, and in the next, it's Decoration Day. In addition to the name change, how we actually celebrate Memorial Day in the United States has really evolved over the decades. This newspaper article from 1933 gives a good example of how earlier Memorial Day celebrations went. Memorial Day celebrations typically started in church, and then, as this article suggests, immediately following this service, the march to the cemetery was started, and it was a bit like a parade. A visit to the cemetery figures prominently in most Memorial Day celebrations. Here in this clip it says, The cemetery was the mecca for many families during the day, not a grave went untouched, flowers being placed on every grassy mound. The article continues to say, The cemetery was beautiful, the caretakers had the grass closely mowed in all parts, and as the sun shone through the trees, down onto the graves, the sight was most impressive and affecting. We need to take a moment to talk about the blue and the gray, by which I mean the Union and the Confederate armies who fought against each other during America's Civil War. When General Logan created Memorial Day, it began as a remembrance for Union soldiers only. Even so, as the years passed, Americans wanted to be united and let go of past hatreds. People would write their newspapers to express this. Here's a good example from 1897. 
comes from Colonel James Forney. I won't read the entire clip, but here's the gist. He says, Memorial Day is the most impressive of all our national holidays. And then later he adds, it would, however, be a much happier and grander scene for the future if the North and South would join together instead of having separate days and make Decoration Day sacred to the memory of both. This would indeed make it, of all days, one of the grandest in the history of the Republic. Along the same lines, I thought this article from 1900 is quite touching. It reads, Perhaps no more significant feature of the day was afforded than at the numerous places where men who fought each other in the sixties either decorated the graves of foe men or joined hands with erstwhile enemies in joint tribute. And here's an illustration I found from 1897 that I really like. It says, Love and tears for the blue, tears and love for the gray. That's America for you. United we stand and divided we fall. Am I right? People sometimes confuse Memorial Day with Veterans Day, but there is a difference between the two. Memorial Day is a memorial for those who died. It honors all military personnel who lost their lives during service to the USA. Veterans Day, on the other hand, exists to thank military personnel, both living and dead. But why is Memorial Day in May? When General Logan created Memorial Day, he wasn't being random, he was being practical. Memorial Day is in May simply because so many flowers bloom this time of year. Nowadays, it's pretty easy for us to get flowers all year round, but back then, folks couldn't just dash to the florist or the grocery store as easily as we can, so they made their own floral arrangements for the most part. That's why it made sense to set the holiday during a time when flowers would be available in most home gardens. When I grew up, Memorial Day was a holiday which meant no school on Monday. But early on, school kids would actually spend the day performing patriotic programs. In fact, in the past, Memorial Day was a rather somber event. This newspaper article from 1883 sums it up really well. Decoration Day is past, an occasion which to many American hearts is full of more profound significance than Thanksgiving Day and replete with more tender associations than Christmas. But I've got to tell you, things really changed after World War II. I'm going to let the newspapers of 1946 speak for me. World War II ended in 1945. And here we have a typical headline from 1946, which reads, Memorial Day, first holiday of the summer. During this time is when many lakes and swimming pools began to choose Memorial Day weekend as their time to kick off the summer season. And why not go horseback riding? And check out this guy, picture of a contented man the dream of every fisherman, a day off from business worries and cares. If Dad's a fisherman, here's the way he'd like to spend Memorial Day, first holiday of the summer. And here are some more Memorial Day suggestions from 1946. The family can tie in a pleasant picnic with either a fishing or swimming trip, and if Dad is real ambitious, he can build a fire and roast hot dogs or hamburgers. I've got to say, this type of celebration for Memorial Day sounds a lot like what I grew up with. I'm curious what your experience with Memorial Day has been like. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below. Now, the meaning of Memorial Day hasn't been completely forgotten, and this article reminds us that in many towns there will be Memorial Day observances and parades and participation in the event. these events adds still another way to diversify the holiday program. In 2000, the National Moment of Remembrance Act was passed by the U.S. Congress and signed into law. This act encourages all U.S. citizens to spend a minute in silence at 3 p.m. local time on Memorial Day as a way to honor all those who have died in military service. 
they chose 3 p.m. local time because at 3 p.m. is a time when most Americans will likely be making the most of the freedoms we enjoy. It's really just a simple way to put the memorial back into Memorial Day. Now, I've set my alarm for 3 p.m. this Memorial Day, and I wonder, what about you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching.